since uh, Saturday before the, before the Sunday of Lent, the third week of Lent, when we are again in California, and Santee near San Diego. And uh, a few considerations on the great uh, true story of Susanna. She lived 600 years before the birth of Christ, and that uh, just before the coming of Nebuchadnezzar. And the event of her innocence changed the history of the Jewish people. And the event of her innocence made a massive transformation of the life of the boy Daniel and affected nations and civilizations. And here we see it's interesting when Susanna was just simply a beautiful young woman who was married to Joachim. She was exceedingly beautiful and very innocent. And she lived a perfect and innocent life. She did not ask for any trouble. She was just simply doing her duty. Her husband was very wealthy and a good man. And she lived in, 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 the, in Israel and said, but there were two wicked judges. And today we see the story of Susanna, that these two wicked judges had control over the people. And the two wicked judges were old. They were old in their sin. And here we're reminded when our Lord Jesus Christ came 600 years later, and they accused a woman of adultery, which is mentioned in the gospel today. She accused a woman of adultery, and our Lord Jesus Christ sat down on the ground, knelt down on the ground. And he, with his finger, he wrote in the sand. And the fathers tell us that he wrote the names of girls. All he did was write the names of girls in the sand. And the elder men recognized the names, and the younger men recognized the names, and then they left. Because our Lord Jesus Christ was writing down the names of all the women with which they had sinned. That he knew every single one of them and all of their sins. But he didn't say a single word out loud. And he wrote only in the sand. And they watched him read in the sand. And the gospel tells us, and the eldest left first. And St. Augustine says, why did the eldest leave first? Because they are more wicked and they have committed more sin." And they are more hardened in their evil and their greater viciousness when they saw our Lord Jesus Christ showing the first their wickedness before showing the wickedness of the young. They, in embarrassment, wandered away. And they did not stone the lady that was taken in adultery. It was mentioned in the gospel today. In the gospel, we have a woman who was guilty and she was taken in adultery. In the epistle, we have a woman who is innocent who was falsely accused of adultery and was going to be put to death according to the law of Moses. And the same law was to be applied to both women. Susanna, 600 years before Jesus Christ was born, and the woman taken in adultery who was really guilty when our Lord Jesus Christ walked the earth. In both cases, the enemies of God thought they had conquered him. But what did Susanna do? She was simply living her life according to the law of God. She was living in perfect innocence. But then the lust of two old men, two judges. These two judges found out each one were filled with a great lust for her. And they decided we will get her because we are the judges. And she will have to submit to us or she shall be put to death. And nobody wants to die. Nobody wants to die. You know that the devil is laying the foundations with this coronavirus. He's laying the foundations with the modern focus on health and good diet and good life and so on. He's laying the foundations for our betrayal. Satan wants us to believe that the most important thing is health. And that if you're not healthy, then you, and you cannot survive, and you can't physically live in this life, then there's no reason to continue going. And therefore, one day the devil will come to the Catholic. One day he will come to the so-called Christian. He will come to the so-called believer in our Lord Jesus Christ. And he will say to the so-called believer, you must take the mark of the beast. You must turn against God. And if you don't turn against your God, we will put you to death. And what's going to happen? Throughout the entire world, souls are going to very quickly lay down their faith and very quickly give in to sin and hand themselves over to the wicked judges in the time of the Antichrist. And in fact, in almost every time in history. But Susanna did not. And note the words of Susanna. The two wicked judges came to her. And they said, we are the judges of the people. We decide who lives and who dies. And they were well known as wicked judges. And you must decide to sin with us 
or we will say that a young man came and committed adultery with thee, and we're, and you will be put to death. And what did she respond? Notice on that day, Susanna was not planning to go to battle. On that day, she thought it was a normal afternoon, a hot afternoon in the summer in Israel. She did not think anything special about that day. It was just another day. She was not prepared for battle. She was not prepared for temptation. She was just going through a normal day. But she was going through a normal day with the love of God inside of her heart. She was going through a normal day with faith in her deepest blood and for a normal day with her loves properly in order. And on this normal day, two wicked men came and they threatened her. You are going to lose your life with Joachim. You're going to lose your husband. You're going to lose your life in this whole place. You're going to lose your life physically. You're going to be put to death. And your reputation is going to be destroyed. You'll be known as a wicked adulteress for all history. You're going to be ruined in every way if you don't agree to sin with us. She wasn't ready for that attack. It is not important for me to know the day the devil's coming to attack. It's not important for us to know the day of our temptation. We just go through our ordinary days. And when the day comes, if the love of God is in my heart, if faith is in my heart, if I follow the angels in my daily life, then when the devil comes, it will be another day to follow the angels. It will be another day of faith in the heart. In fact, it will be a great day. And this is what happened to Susanna. The two judges came and they said, if you don't sin with us, we will put you to death. And what did she respond? If I do this thing, her first thought was, I'm being asked to commit a mortal sin. I'm being asked to commit the sin of adultery with two men. I'm being asked to commit a most wicked sin against God. If I do this thing, it is death to me. These are the exact words of Susanna. If I do this thing, it is death to me. What would a normal woman say? A normal woman would say, if I do this thing, I am, I am trapped. But if I don't do this thing, said, if I think it is dead, then if I I shall not escape your hands. She only considers one death, and that is the death of the soul. She cannot lose her purity. She cannot lose her, her tolerate this death. And how long does she discuss? How long does she contemplate? How long does she reason? How long is the conversation? It is a matter of only a minute. They come and say to her, sin with us or, we're going, or you're going to die. And then she said in one to two sentences, if I do this thing, it is death to me. But if I do it not, I shall not escape your hands. And then she cried out with a loud voice and she screamed that all the servants might come. She did not try to reason with them. She didn't try to make an argument. She knew their wickedness and she knew God and she was going to be with God. And then she thought that she would not escape her hands, their hands. And what was going to happen? She was going to be brought forth in front of all the people. She was going to be shamed, which is worse than death. And after she was shamed, she was going to be put to death. But she had a choice between being shamed between all the people and being put to death and the life of God in the soul. And she chose the life of God in the soul, not knowing what would happen. The woman that was taken in adultery, we come forward 600 years later. She was guilty, and she was brought before our Lord. And our Lord said to her at the very end, Go and sin no more. It was a confession. And so go and sin no more. And she was saved. But when Susanna was saved, what happened? Daniel became a great prophet. Daniel was a 12-year-old boy, and he was just one of the boys of the many boys of Israel. He was a good boy, but he was just a boy. But when he saw Susanna, who everyone knew was innocent, he wasn't the only one who knew she was innocent, all knew she was innocent, but when he saw Susanna being put to death, he stood up filled by the Holy Ghost, and he became a great prophet. She was the occasion of him becoming a great prophet. And she was the reason why Daniel became esteemed amongst the people. And Daniel was esteemed amongst the people, and then when Nebuchadnezzar came and destroyed the temple, Nebuchadnezzar came and, and, and drove the Jews into, into exile, and he brought a great uh, destruction of Israel. He's looked for any special boys with gifts. 
And they'll ask, are there any boys with special gifts here? Yeah, there's Daniel. Daniel saved Susanna. Daniel saved innocent blood. They said, we'll take Daniel. We'll bring him with us. We'll give him a special treatment. And we'll let him be with the boys who are raised with the emperor. And so they brought him. And he was raised with Nebuchadnezzar. And then why was he raised with Nebuchadnezzar? And why were Sedrach, Mesa, and Dimnigo, the three, the three young men who would be in the fiery furnace, they were the three friends of Daniel. Susanna's innocence was the cause of Daniel being a great prophet. And he brought three friends with him. And these three friends were so filled with the love of God that when they were given a test, they would imitate Susanna. And the king would say to them, Nebuchadnezzar, the great one, would say to them, Worship this false god, the 60-foot statue that was put in, in, in Babylon, or you will be burned in the fire. And they said, We will not worship the false god. And they were thrown in the fire. And when they were thrown in the fire, like Susanna was saved by Daniel, they were saved by the angels in the fire. And they began to praise God. This praise has been done many times in the history of the world. But when these three young men praised God, what happened? Fire and heat praised the Lord. Ice and snow praised the Lord. Sun and moon praised the Lord. Ye sons of, of Israel praised the Lord. They sang the long hymn of thanksgiving. That moved in their heart when they were thrown in the fire. And their gratitude towards God drove the fire away. And their thought of God drove away the, the attacks of wickedness. And it is instructed in the church, it's in every missile on the altar, and this missile here on the altar, and in every missile here on them. There is found in the front the prayers of thanksgiving after receiving Holy Communion. And these prayers are the prayers of the three young men in the fiery furnace. And they're written in every missile. So the three young men in every Latin missile that we gave on the altar, these three young men in the fiery furnace gave such a praise that when they were thrown in the fire, with faith in their hearts, the fire was driven away by their praise. And the church says, what should be in our hearts after we receive Holy Communion? The three young men conquered the fiery furnace. Daniel became a great prophet. And the world was transformed. And we are told to pray the prayer of the three young men in the fiery furnace. Every Sunday, we say part of that prayer in the Holy Bread Office of Louds. And then throughout the week, throughout the year, each priest Hundreds of thousands, if not a million priests down the last 4,000 years, Old Testament priests and now New Testament priests have said the prayer that came from these three young men who would not have had that prayer if Susanna did not stand. Susanna transformed the world by her innocence. How are we going to transform the world today? It must be transformed by innocence. And Susanna changed the world because when she was given the great test, she said, if I do this sin, you want me to take this wicked vaccine? You want me to take the mark of the beast? You want me to bow down and worship Baal? You want me to do anything against the law of God? The law of government has commanded me to do something against the law of God. I will not do it. And if I do this thing, it is death to me. But if I do it not, I shall not escape the hands of the government. I shall not escape the hands of the persecutor. But here, church, the church shows us the real history of the world. Susanna was not slain that day. Before that afternoon, before 6 p.m. that day, they went to sin with her in the early afternoon around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Before 6 p.m., the two judges were dead. They were dead before sunset. And Susanna was raised in glory before sunset. But at one o'clock in the afternoon, she thought that it was over and that she would be handed over to the enemies of God and that she would be dead. And what did she do when she was on her way to being judged? O oh Lord, thou knowest my innocence. I have done none of these things these wicked men have accused me of. And she wept. And the Lord heard her prayer. Now, why did the Lord hear her prayer? Because of her great faith and her great innocence. And he heard her prayer, and he raised up a 12-year-old boy who stood up in front of all the Jews. And this boy said, Why do you people of Israel, why are you betraying innocent blood? Let the judges be judged. Now, we must understand that we are now in a time where Bill Gates and George Soros and President Biden and the wicked leaders of the world. The time of their judgment is at hand. 
The time is very close where God will raise up a little Daniel somewhere in the world. Some young boy shall be raised up, and there shall be judgment. We are not at the time in which we are all going to be handed over and die, though there will be some martyrs perhaps. He says, not the time that we're going to be handed over and die. Susanna was ready to be a martyr. The three young men were ready to be martyrs. They were very happy to be martyrs. Daniel was a young boy, maybe 15 years old at the time, maybe 16, and he thought he would die when they, were, when they had trapped him. He lived to be about 90 years old. The three young men were thought they were going to die before they ended their teenage years. They lived to a great old age. Susanna thought she was going to die in her 20s. She lived to a great old age. Not everyone that stands for God is going to be martyrs. God will allow some to continue to the end of their days. Others will be allowed to become great martyrs. But what is it that is going to bring the victory over every age of trouble? It's going to be innocence and faith, innocence and faith. These are our greatest defenses. Be innocent in heart, be honest in spirit, and have a deep and true faith. And with these two characteristics, when the enemies attack us, if it is a day for us to be glorified by martyrdom, we shall be glorified. If it is not that day, no matter how many darts, no matter how many assaults they give against us, they shall fail. And furthermore, the enemies of God and our enemies, since we are the friends of God and have the same friends that God has and the same enemies that he has, they shall perish. We are in such a time now. How do we prepare for the great battle that's coming upon us? Innocence and faith, faith and innocence. Let's follow the example of the great Susanna in her battle. And then this is a beautiful day, the day the Susanna Saturday, that we read the story of Susanna. As a child, always wait and always long for this day on the Holy this is Saturday, third Saturday of Lent, we read the story of Susanna. I didn't realize you could read it on another day, only read it on this day, on the day in which you would be at the Mass, the story of Susanna. And that this is there, that innocent blood was saved in that day. And innocent blood does not always perish in this world. It does sometimes for the sake of God's glory. But it does not always perish. Innocence does not always perish at the hand of wickedness in this world. Sometimes God shows his justice even in this world against the wicked ones. And we know not the day or the hour. But God knows the day and God knows the hour. And no matter what happens, it shall be for the greater good of the, good of the world and society and the greater good of us if we just maintain the spirit of innocence and complete faith and that there is only one death that we are afraid of, and that is the death of sin. And the wisdom of Susanna will be in all the saints. Let it be in us. Those God goes to God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.